folks, I'm Ian Baker, and today we're going to go over the 2020 Keystone Passport 292BH. This is a quad bunk model, excellent access to storage in the back because there is a loading door back there, and you have the big super slide here with your U-shaped dinette and a tri-fold sofa. Pretty common design, nothing that's super groundbreaking or mind-blowing here, but it is also very functional. If you have a big family, this is a good floor plan for you. Let's take a look over here at the kitchen. What you'll notice right away is that you have an L-shaped kitchen, upgraded countertops in the Passport. It's a thermal foil rather than your T-mold, which allows you to undermount the sink. And you can see when you do that, you can also have a sink top cover like they have right here, which gives you prep space between this and then your recessed cooktop. This is kind of your main prep areas. If they didn't do that, you really wouldn't have anything. So I'm glad that they did. And you have space right back here for a coffee maker. You'll also see that you have an electrical outlet right up top. So that way you have a spot in which you can plug that in. High rise pull out faucet. I do like that. It's an upgraded faucet, very modern look. Looks a lot more residential than what we see in a lot of lighter weight travel trailers. When we take this off, this of course is cutting board quality. And as I mentioned, they're able to undermount that sink because of the style of countertop. Single bowl stainless steel sink. How do you guys feel about that? I know some people are very split, no pun intended. Um, you know, some people are, are good with the big single bowl because you can fit some larger dishes, pots and pans and things in there. Some people like the split bowl because it's a little bit easier to wash and rinse dishes. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Over here to the side, as I mentioned, that recessed cooktop, pretty common stuff here. Furion folds up and back that doubles as a backsplash. The knobs light up and your oven has a light in there as well. The front burner is high output. Underneath the sink, dedicated spot for a trash can. I think they nailed it. I love, love, love when manufacturers do this. I know it's one of those really small things, but I hate having to, you know, tie a bag like around a pole or a knob. I love being able to have a spot for my trash can. Over to this side, you have two full extension ball bearing drawers for your silverware. Slightly odd location just because, you know, it's a little bit low and over to the side. I mean, it still definitely works, um, just not quite as convenient as you see in some other kitchen setups. Coming around to the side here, courtesy light. So you'll see this blue light. You have a courtesy light here. If you take a look in the back, you'll see you have another one back by the bunk room. And then you have LED lights underneath the U-shaped dinette too. Um, I, I, Personally, again, and I've said this before, I wish that they were just more of like a yellow or like a white light than a blue, but it is what it is. If you want to turn them off, the control for it's right up here, but it's all or nothing. It's either they're all on or they're all off. Your main control panel is right next to that. Everything you need, of course, including your tank monitoring panel on there. You will see your water heater does run off both propane and electric. You do uh, have a switch there for both, and you can turn both of them on at the same time for faster recovery. Dropping back down underneath real quick, I will show you some extra storage so you have a spot in which you can put your pots and pans. And then additional storage across the, whoop, across the top here as well. Sorry, I'm running into things. Um, you'll see that you have the frosted glass, which I do like that. It helps uh, break up the wood look a little bit. I like the fact it's not clear because I want to hide my dishes in there. I don't want people to necessarily see all my beautiful eclectic camping dishes. Um, over to the side is your microwave underneath your hood with both a light and a fan. Your fridge-freezer combo runs off both propane and electric. You do have a cutout here for some taller items. You know, if you have a two liter or, um, you know, half gallon of milk, something like that, it's got a spot for it. Your thermostat is located on the wall. This does operate both your ducted AC as well as your ducted in-floor heat. On the ceiling, you'll see this one is prepped for uh, Wi-Fi. If you want it, you do have to have a cell plan in order to make that function, but it is prepped for it. You have speakers in here as well, which we'll get to the multimedia center in a little bit. And as I mentioned, the ducted AC. Bathroom is in the back. I'll take a seat right back here for you just to kind of show you the space. So I'm six foot tall. Uh, it is, you know, a little tight on the right hand side here. You'll see that I'm kind of rubbing on the wall. The left is better because they did cut this out. If they wouldn't have, it would be super tight in here. But it is manageable. It can do what I need to do. Have a little bit of storage space there as well as right down below. Open this up, you'll see some good space there too. If you have a really skinny trash can, um, I have one at home that I have next to like my laundry machine for, you know, lint and stuff where it's kind of oval and skinny like this, and that would actually probably work in there. You have decent sized countertops right up top here, electrical outlet over to the side, mirrored medicine cabinet. I like the fact that it is uh, wood, not a plastic one. You know, again, in a lightweight camper, a lot of times they'll go to like a plastic. 
course, a vent fan up top, LED lights, a tub, which I, I also like having a tub in a bunk model because if you have smaller kids, you want to be able to give them a bath. This lets you do it. As far as the height, uh, without the skylight, you can see I can kind of step back here. I'm Again, I'm six foot. I am touching. Well, my hair is kind of puffed up, so maybe not, but pretty close there. Uh, with the skylight, it does add a little more. So you might be able to be like six one, still with a shower in here without ducking down. Much taller than that, though, you'll probably have to bend a little. Making our way back out. We'll come into the bunk room. Quad bunks in here. 300 pound weight capacity. As far as size, I'll take a jump in here. Ah, not bad, right? So as you can see, if, if well, I'll kind of scoot all the way up to the top. So if I had a pillow here, my feet are basically just about touching. So at six foot, I can make this happen. Again, if you're much taller, probably you probably have to curl up a little bit, but uh, has the weight capacity, has the length for normal. Six foot adult, I say normal like there is a normal height, right? Um, you'll see windows on uh, both sides here. You also have the door right down below. This is awesome. So I'll show you this when we go outside. Oh, losing my mic there. Um, but right here, you'll see the, the hinges. This folds up. And if you haven't seen it before, this opens up, gives you a ton of awesome storage space when you're traveling. I really like this too. You have a spot to hang clothes in the back. Far too often, bunk models do not have that. Uh, I'd have to put a hanger in here. It looks like it does have enough depth that the hanger can actually fit in there normally. I wouldn't have to turn it, but don't quote me on that. I haven't tested it. I'll have to bring a hanger with me next time and give her a test. Um, and then underneath, you can see you have a little bit of storage space there too. Right up top, TV connection. So if you want a TV in here, that's the place to do it. And then everyone can have their head, you know, kind of at this end so everyone can watch the TV at the same time. Kind of the same thing over on the other side here. You will see that, uh, you know, you have, again, decent width bunks as well, which I always enjoy. So that way, you know, as I mentioned, if you do have adults, you're not uh, feeling like you're super closed in. So make our way right back out. This is a versatile closet. A lot of the passports have these, just about every one I can think of. You'll see the hanging rod up top, removable shelves. So here, if you want to use it as a you know, linen closet, you can do that. If you need extra clothes storage for the kids' room, you can do that too. Pantry, whatever you need, uh, you have that versatility, that flexibility there. And then we get into the main living area, U-shaped dinette. I do like the fact that it's a leatherette on the bottoms at least. You know, I, I kind of wish some manufacturers would go to like a... I don't know, kind of like a basic cloth back, something that's not too, uh, I don't know, RV-esque, if you will, right? But something that's just a little bit more stylish, so you can throw like some throw pillows in there, make it a little bit nicer rather than just the, the leatherette look. I know a lot of manufacturers went to that. I do like it on the base, though, because it is easy to clean, especially in a bunk model when you have kids. If they're going to spill stuff, you know, it makes those seats easy to clean up. You can see that blue light underneath. Again, you can turn that off if you so choose. This table does drop down into a bed, so it makes a nice large bed where two adults can sleep, which is great. As far as seating, folks, just like most U-shaped dinettes, you'll get uh, you know, probably four people in here, uh, any more than that, and you'll be really cramped on the leg space, but four people, you should be able to manage. It's a pretty good sized table here as well. Underneath the seats, you have somewhat easy access storage as you have the swing out door. Now granted, if you put stuff way back there, you're gonna have to get down, you know, kind of on your hands and knees to get to it but that's probably still more convenient than having to lift up the cushion to access it. In lieu of storage, you'll see they went with larger windows, which again, we see a lot of manufacturers doing that, uh, you know, kind of last year, coming into this year, helping to bring more natural light into the camper. And then you have a tri-fold sofa. So this is great. Not only is it comfortable to sit on, but more importantly, this also folds out into a bed. Uh, this can also sleep two adult guests. So I really like that because in a bunk model like this, let's say you just have two kids, uh, and you know, and they want to bring some friends or you know, you uh, invite your family friends and they have kids, that way the kids have space, the adults have space. It, this camper really just allows a lot of flexibility with the sleeping space. You'll see right down here, you have an electrical outlet as well as a couple USB ports. So if you need to plug in, you know, phones, tablets, whatever it may be, you have the ability to do that. And while you're sitting here, if you want to watch TV, you can certainly do that too. Multimedia center right down below. This one is Bluetooth capable and it controls the speakers in here as well as outside. You'll also see the HDMI port so you can plug in some auxiliary equipment. So if the kids want like a gaming system, something like that, not that you'd have it out here, you probably have it in the back or you know, maybe you want a DVD player, you can plug that in too. Storage both on the bottom and up top. I'll open it up, you know, it's nothing too extravagant, but it does the trick. Then if we make our way into the bedroom, so uh, one of the things I do love about passport bedrooms are the bed. This is a 60 by 80 residential queen size bed. So 
That way your feet aren't hanging off. Uh, another thing I really like is the nightstands. A lot of times manufacturers just have a really thin panel right here. And if you try to use it to, whoops, God, I'm hitting everything. If you try to use it to get in or out of bed, um, you know, normally with that thin panel, you'll just push your hand right through it, which nobody wants. With this, it actually has some support. You can put your CPAP machine on there, plenty of room for, you know, um, like a bottle of water or something at night, which I have to have. So again, I do like it. Right up above that, you will see your mirrored wardrobe. You have a hanging rod there, little shelf up top, plus the shelf connecting the two. And this has a decent amount of space. I mean, obviously not all the way in the back, but right up front. You can put some stuff up there. I, I, whatever it is will obviously be open. So maybe you just want to put some deco you know, decorative stuff up there rather than close. The option is yours. Down underneath, it is worth mentioning, you have electrical outlet there and USB port. So if you need to, you know, again, plug in a CPAP machine, something like that, you can. You'll see you have actual slider, uh, not fully pocket doors because, you know, they're not pocketed into a wall, but a sliding door rather than a curtain. So you get a little bit more privacy. And if you want, you have space to install a TV here in the bedroom. So that way, when you do close it down at night, you're able to watch a show. Now that we've seen the insides, take a look at some of the outside features on the 2020 Keystone Passport 292BH. Up front here, you have two 20-pound propane tanks with a cover, rails for your battery right behind that. And if you look all the way over to this side there, you will see that this one also has um, solar prep. So if you want solar, simply buy portable panels, plug it in right there. It's already pre-wired. It'll trickle charge your battery for you. Diamond dash plating coming up the front, helping protect that front end from rocks and debris that may get thrown up by the tow vehicle. And when we come around to the side, you will see the pass-through storage. You have a covered hinge on here so you don't have a bunch of rust coming down, and it's a magnetic catch. That way as the kids come and go to shut that, it's not gonna snap a plastic piece off or anything. When you take a look in here, you will see you have big baggage doors, so it allows you to put in some of those larger items full pass through all the way through, same large door on the other side, and the light in here has a motion sensor setting so that when you open it up, that light turns on for you. Uh, we're gonna drop down below real quick. So they did change, this is kind of a, an earlier model, uh, 2020. So they did make some changes. They went to um, electric stabilizer jacks. So if you're getting a later model 2020, you can expect that. Also, although this one does have the completely, you know, enclosed and insulated underbelly, they actually changed the floors. The underbelly is going to change a little bit as well. They went to a hyperdeck, which is a, uh, a newer composite flooring. And so you can expect that on some of the, the real, real recent 2020 models as well. And then you'll see this one has a huck bolt frame, which is great because huck bolt is easier to repair in the event that there is, uh, you know, bad damage to the travel trailer. And kind of research has kind of shown the number one place that your rust on the frame tends to start at is right at that weld seam. So by help re eliminating and reducing those weld seams, you help to reduce the chance of rust starting in that spot. Making right back a little bit further, you'll see your entry has three foldable steps here, little grab handle to get in. So, you know, I, I kind of wish it would have been a larger one just because it's a little bit easier, but the SL is kind of like the step down. You know, if you go up to the, G the Passport GT, those models will have that foldable grab handle for you. You'll see the power awning, touch button to roll out, same thing to go back in, LED light strip on there, a couple outside speakers that are tied to that multimedia center inside, but that unit is Bluetooth capable. Electrical outlet, need to plug anything in, that'll be the place to do it. You'll also see black tank flush, very convenient feature to have. That way, instead of having to stick a hose down a toilet to wash out your black tank, you just stick the hose right in there. That black tank has sprayers built into it and it'll wash it out for you. Down underneath, this one has uh, what they call load equalization axles, basically a fancy name for a spread axle system. By having spread axles like that, they have a little bit wider wheelbase, you tend to get less sway when towing this down the road. And as we come to the back, you have my personal favorite part about a bunkhouse, dun dun dun, dun the outside kitchen. You'll see you have your refrigerator right over to the side for your condiments and beverages. Storage up top here for your paper plates, maybe some solo cups, things like that. Little outside kitchen, pull this guy out. You can lock it out there. You have your faucet, couple different attachments. You have your standard, uh, standard faucet attachment there, or you have this guy. So if you want like a garden hose attachment, you can hook that up, put a little sprayer on there. It gives you a you know, some different options. And the cool thing about that is you do have both hot and cold access. Even though there is an outside shower on the off door side, this is just a little more accessible. And then you have the two burner cooktop. So if you want to do some cooking, you have the capability to do that. If you need to plug anything in, you have like an electric griddle, something like that. You also have an electrical outlet right up top. And of course, the power of that two burner cooktop, you will see right underneath the propane quick connect. 
Coming around to the back, this one does not have your standard bumper, but they did still give you a spare tire. You'll see they mounted it right here on the back. This is just your Key TV multi-source controller. It's a big, long, fancy name for this is where you plug in your cable and satellite. And then right back here, that's where you will store your sewer hose because you don't have that bumper. Um, taking a look up top, you'll see the nice rounded radius there. Uh, that's something that has changed a little bit too is the roof. So <clears throat> if you see that it has your electric stabilizer jacks, that means it also has a walkable roof. That's one of the big changes that Passport made on the 2020. So if it doesn't have the electric jacks, it's not a walkable roof. If it does have the electric stabilizer jacks, you can walk right up there. This is locked, but this is the door that, uh, that lets you see all that storage, just where all that storage is. So when you open this up, you can fold that bunk up and lock it up top. And that gives you huge storage space back there for, uh, you know, you can put, maybe it'll fit like some kids' bikes in there. You can put a totes in there, some extra coolers, things like that. Over to the side, you'll see the 30 amp power supply right there. Your outside showers located there. Your terminations, if you drop right down underneath, You'll see your terminations are located there, and you will also see that both your black and gray tank valves, the valve bodies themselves are in that underbelly with that insulation, so that way it is protected from the elements. With the slide in, as you can see, you do have some things that are blocked off. So you can access the bedroom, no problem. Just come in, take a right, boom. You can take a nap, no big deal. But depending on if you leave the door open or not, right, Generally when traveling, you wanna have the bathroom door closed because otherwise it's gonna kind of flop around in here as you're going down the road. Um, I left it open just to show you that if you really wanted to, if you somehow tied the door back, you could technically kind of remove the table here. I'm just making a bunch of noise. You'd have to find, you know, again, a better spot for this, slide it underneath or something like that. And you could make your way into the bathroom. So it's possible, it's not super convenient, but it is possible to do something there so you can access it. Otherwise, of course, if you close the door, you're not gonna be able to open it because it's gonna hit the U-shaped dinette. Uh, also, you'll see here, you do get full access to the fridge and freezer. All right, folks, and that wraps it up. Again, this is a 2020 Keystone Passport 292BH. If you're interested and you'd like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description. Also in the comments section, let me know what you think they nailed, what you think they missed, or if you were designing the RV, what you would personally change. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.